right, all right, all right. Thanks everyone for coming here. I hope you had a great time so far. I hope you enjoyed lunch. And yeah, I'm talking about Flutter and Apple Watch and why it's no problem today for the next 10 minutes. So what we're gonna cover today, um, first so, some things about me, then the problem, but it's not a problem as the slide already said, the solution to that problem, some pitfalls I experienced, and if we have time, also a small live demo, because what could go wrong there? Then you might wonder, who is this guy presenting here? Uh, as I already said, I'm Michael Hitzger. I'm from Austria. You might notice a bit of an accent sometimes. And I'm usually an iOS developer attractive. Um, yeah, they, we do some GPS and wellness pet trackers. Uh, um, and when I'm not developing iOS apps, I'm a Flutter dev with some at night, and I have some side projects going on there. Um, but let's come to the fun part. What's Einstein's most famous equation? Right, E equals MC squared. Now, what's his second most famous equation? You're totally right, it's flat and Apple Watch, no problem. <laughs> I am no mathematician, but it sounds pretty convincing to me, and also Mr. Einstein approves. Um, but is it even possible? You know, flat is this cross-platform thingy with Dart, and then you have this Apple Watch with Swift uh, or Swift UI. And of course, it's possible I just checked your attention. Um, it said in the last slide. Um, but what's the actual problem? Like I said, we have the Flutter on the one side with Dart, and we have the native Swift or Swift UI app on the Apple Watch. And how do we get information between those two? It's actually pretty simple. We just use an iPhone in between, and we use method channels to pass information from Dart and Flutter via the iPhone to the Apple Watch and back and forth. Going to have a look how it's done uh, in a minute. Um, then we're gonna go right to the solution. So some of you probably already have added an Apple Watch app to an existing iOS app, so it's actually pretty straightforward. Just in Xcode, you add a new Apple Watch target, and you what you need to make sure is that you enable Bitcode here in the build, target's build settings, just a requirement from Flutter. Um, it, they also mentioned in the official documentation. Um, yeah, just make sure that this is enabled. And then we're going to dive right into the code. So we do the setup of the app to watch connection. It's also pretty straightforward. There's no Flutter involved there yet. It's just we do a standard way of in initializing the uh, watch session. We do it here. Um, and then we're going to conform our app delegate, or if you want to use a separate class for it, uh, to the WC session delegate and do nothing yet, because the fun part will come later there. Then we're gonna do the same uh, thingy on the watch side. I used to, uh, I like to call my classes like watch communication manager, but you can call it anything. You can call it chef, I don't care. Um, but we're gonna do the same thing here. We initialize the watch, the watch session and also conform it to the WC session delegate here. So that's kind of the basic Flutter, uh, basic watch OS to iOS uh, setup. Then we're gonna go to the cool part with Flutter and iOS. Um, so we have the native code here. It's having a board boring time. It's just sitting there. It's not getting executed. And it's just being becoming really bored. So what do we need to do to communicate to native code? You're totally right. It's platform channels. Uh, probably most of you have already heard about platform channels. Um, we are just going to initialize one in the next step. So we have the channel here. You can pass the name here. Then in this case, the app is called Vitals. It's the demo app. We're going to have a look at later. Um, we do the basic platform channel setup with the method call handler. So everyone that's not so familiar with platform channels, the code in here basically gets called whenever we have the whenever we pass we call the channel from the native side. And then we can also invoke a method which will be sent to the native side via Flutter with the channel dot invoke method. And what you can pay attention to here is that we have this forward to Apple Watch method name, which tells our app then that's it's forward to Apple Watch, obviously. And this method that's being passed in here is then being passed to the Apple Watch, and then we can do some stuff on the Apple Watch in the next step. Then in the app delegate side, it's the, still the iOS side here. We do the counterpart to it. So we initialize the Flutter method channel, same name. Um, it's also we have the set method call handle here. And if you remember from the last slide, we have the forward, the forward to Apple Watch uh, name, uh, method name. And Later, we're going to add some Apple Watch forwarding there. And we can also invoke the method, which will be sent to Flutter in here. Um, it's just some dummy text. Then we're going to put it all together. Um, we have the Flutter and iOS app communicating. They're having a great time. But the WatchOS app is still left out. It doesn't feel great to be left out. So we're going to change it in a minute. Um, to that also, the WatchOS app will, has, will have a great time. 
Um, so in the app delegate, we have still a to-do here, and we're going to update it with our watch session. We just check if it's uh, connected and paired. Um, it's reachable. It's, we check also check if it's reachable, because it obviously doesn't make sense to send a message if it's not connected or it's out of reach or something. And then we're just going to forward it. So we don't do any, we don't check what's, pa what's being passed as the method parameter in here. We just forward the method to the uh, watch OS app where the uh, watch session that sent message. And then in the watch counterpart, we have in the did receive message method, which is basically always called when you uh, send a message from the iOS app to the watch OS app. You're going to get the method and the data, and we're going to, uh, what is it? Um, a, yeah, we, yeah, uh, this is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> usually we would just print it. Um, this was some kind of error. We don't have the channel in here. Um, we're just gonna print it here. Uh, we're just gonna do anything we want, really. We can do it on the watch part. Then the other way around, if you want to pass data from the watch to the Flutter app, we just imagine we have a button clicked and then we send a message from the watch app to Flutter to increase some kind of counter or something, or just to update the text. And we just use our session we initialized earlier and then tell it what, what's the method. And this method here is the name of the channel method we're gonna pass in here and then we check on, on the Flutter counterpart for that. Then in the app delegate, we don't touch anything from the data or the method up here. We just forward it to the Flutter app with the method channel. And if you can remember, we have in our Flutter app, we have the method call handler callback. And we're just going to uh, use the up the text from watch method name here and here. And we're just going to print it right here. It's pretty straightforward. So it's no big magic going on here. Um, and that's all from the implementation. But as you see, it's pretty easy. You can use the concept for anything else you need to, like with the new iOS 16 widgets, you can do the same. You could also even do it with the uh, iOS or Android watch, watches. Um, it's the same concept, basically. But I also experienced some pitfalls when developing or adding the watch target. Um, like you add the watch target, you want to run it, and you expect it to work great, right? Well, it's not the case. I got this error. It's red. It's horrifying. I still get goosebumps when looking at it. Um, and my first phase was like this when I saw it. Then I did some Googling, didn't find really an answer until I found one that was promising. Um, it's basically pretty easy to solve. We just need to add this uh, WC companion app bundle identifier to our watch extensions info.plist for all on iOS devs. This basically is just a property list. And we're just going to tell it that we have a watch companion app available so Flutter knows um, that we have that. So this fixes it if you run it for development, but when you run it in release mode, you will still get the error. Um, and this is also like, uh, pretty easy to fix. And if we look at the watch uh, build settings in the uh, in Xcode, we can see that it says watchOS and it doesn't look right. Uh, we see that it says iPhone OS and it doesn't look right, right? Because we have watchOS here and then we have iPhone OS down there. So we're just gonna change it to completely say watchOS and this will make it run smoothly also when running it in production or profile or release mode. Um, then when you have the basic setup, you get no errors. You expect it to work flawlessly even when the app is closed, but it doesn't work that easy. Um, like from my experience, it works like a charm if you have both apps opened, um, but we, it didn't quite work out well if the watch, uh, iPhone app is closed. And don't worry, it will work in release mode. Um, it took me a while to figure that out, but don't panic if it doesn't work in dev mode. Um, it will work in release mode. And now we're going to have a live demo. So for that, so we have the basic counter app here, tracks and vitals. I tracked my coffee consumer yesterday and my beer consumer at the party yesterday. <laughs> um, it was quite fun and expensive, um, but I'm just going to open the companion app on the watch. And if you, you can press any button here, and it should open it on, uh, update it up there as well. Uh, it's, it works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a coffee as well, so we can increase the coffee counter here. Uh, 
that's all. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be available for talks later.